The Culture Pop Podcast is brought to you by the law offices of Jacob and Ronnie. Accident or injury, call Jacob and Ronnie. Call Jacob. Hey, it's Mace. If you or a friend or loved one is injured in an accident, the first person you should call is my friend Jacob. When I did this, Jacob was great. He helped me by talking through the next steps, which really put my mind at ease. When you're injured in an accident, you got to have an expert. That's why you call Jacob, just like I did. Call Jacob, 844 24Jacob. That's 844 24Jacob. Or visit calljacob.com. Call Jacob. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Culture Pop Podcast. I'm Steve Mason, along with Sue Kalinske. This is the show where we talk about everything pop culture. And today, we've got episode number seven, Sugar Watch Along Series. And Sue, the cat is out of the bag. We know he's an alien. We know there's an alien society. Uh, There are kind of two stories going on at the same time. They're still looking for for Olivia. Uh, Sugar wants to look for. Um, And there's this alien society that is going to pull up stakes and go back home. What What's your take on what's going on? It's wild. Well, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm still trying to figure out how the seagulls are involved in all of this. And now there's this politician and his family that are involved in all of this. And then, of course, you know, you see the trap door open at one point and you see someone who had rubber gloves on and you don't know who it is. Yes, yes. Now, I assume that we're finding Olivia in episode eight. Are we agreed? Yes, definitely. I also think we're going to find out the story of, and I think it's Jen, right? The story Jen is his sister. Yes. And at one point, he was meeting with Henry from the Secret Society. And he said, I hope you find Olivia, but without your sister, I'm afraid you're always going to feel lost. So I assume we're also going to find out the the parallel between Jen, his sister, and Olivia, who's missing, right? Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned politics. It turns out that the aliens have been known to the federal government for a while, and it sounds like they have procured Olivia for a creepy senator's son, who it sounds like is keeping her in the basement, right? Right, right. Well, they said that they're on to us. Yes, yes, they're going to figure it out. Uh, all right, so this is really cool. Uh, joining the show right now is actor Dennis Putsakaris. He has appeared in movies like Batteries Not Included, The Bourne Legacy. On television, he has starred on shows like Shameless and Better Call Saul, and his latest role is in Sugar. He plays Bernie Siegel, who, as a father, loses his son David, and also his daughter Olivia is missing. Dennis Putsakaris joins us. Dennis, thanks a lot for coming on, man. We appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. So we are absolutely loving the show. We obviously are doing an episode after uh, an episode of the podcast after every episode of the show. So this is episode number seven. Um, and the the twist has twisted. We know the big flip in the story. But before we get to all that, I want to ask you something about your character, Bernie. Now, Bernie lost his son, Davey. His daughter, Olivia, is missing. And I'm wondering, in in your head, in in Bernie's head, why is he so supportive and devastated by Davey, but doesn't seem devastated by the fact that Olivia is missing? Ah, well, I can't tell you that. I think you're going to find that out. Yeah. It's hard for me to know certain things because a lot of stuff changed and they've edited things in a way that sometimes I go, oh, I don't remember that. So if I if what I'm remembering is correct, I can't tell you because it'll be it'll ruin the surprise or okay, you know, good. the, the dilemma of that particular problem. Because that's been a running thread throughout all of it is why don't I give a shit about her? Oh, can I swear? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can. Uh, well, then why don't I give a shit about her disappearance? Um, so I think we find that out. Oh, so there's some stuff that maybe was changed by the time you get to see it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, how, how much did you know, you know, when you first got the gig, um, and then you started to learn more about what this show was, um, did you go like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. The dirty secrets of being an actor. Um, well, one of the many secrets 
is that um, you don't know what's going to happen if you don't have all of the script. And so usually you get them as you're going. So there have been all kinds of theories out there. for. We- I Actually, I'm, I'm interested in this. All kinds of theories out there for weeks. And we thought, okay, maybe it's AI, maybe it's aliens. Uh, aliens was actually on our bingo card as a potential uh, ultimate answer here. But what was the thing early in the show that tipped people What was the clue off? for you about the aliens? What was... For me, it was when he... No, go ahead. And this is weird. Episode one, he takes his chopsticks and he plucks that fly out of the air. And I'm like, no, normal people <laughs> yeah. can't do yeah, that. Yeah. Normal people are incapable of that. I thought there were some other wonderful clues, uh, like him staring at the moon. I'd love that. Um what were the other things? Well, there I mean, was he a, just, you know, the fact that he can't, you know, he he drinks alcohol and he doesn't get drunk. Yes. I mean, that little was a things big like one. that. That was a big My one. My favorite thing was the moon, though. I mean, they did that in a couple episodes, you know. So you're working with uh, the great director, Fernando Moraes, uh, along, and uh, also uh, Adam Arkin is also one of the directors on the uh, on the show. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of handheld camera. And you've got a scene with James Cromwell, who plays your father, Jonathan, uh, where you are in an emotional breakdown, knowing that you've got to let Davey go. And it looks to me like there was a lot of handheld camera used in that scene. Am I am I right about that? Yeah, I mean, part of the part of the problem was, and you know, uh, before I answer that, we did that scene like five or six times, so it's possible that. We, at the same time that there was a, a camera on a tripod, a camera sort of floating, which is what Fernando and his amazing DP, Cesar, whose last name I can never pronounce, um, uh, y- you know, who didn't speak English, by the way, <laughs> which was great because when Fernando and Cesar were talking about something, you know, you always thought, oh, they're talking about me. But this, it was, uh, they were amazing. So anyway, he was always. Cesar was doing his own camera work while they, the other cameramen were doing sort of stationary tripod stuff. So I think probably a combined bit of both of those. I mean, the problem was that James was in a bed. So how do you get, how do you maneuver it to get my face in there? So I, I don't remember the bed ever being moved. So I think Cesar probably actually literally got a bed to get that shot. That was a, that was a great, we told James that was his best work. <laughs> um you know it's funny there's a line in that 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 jumped out at me because you're talking about uh david and you said too much too soon too easy you get born into all this you get more and more it's not all his fault and i think it kind of summarizes the danger of being not just a child star but by you know this idea of a nepo baby um kind of being born into so much you know what i mean i do I do. And it seemed um, like a realization that my character would not have ever come to except for this d- horrible thing that had happened in the family. I mean, right up to that point, you know, uh, I think I was oblivious to all that. It's interesting. Uh, you know, the, you know, actors will tell you that, oh, the things they cut, you should have seen the things they were cut. And um, one of the things, I don't know if it's in the episode that you're seeing, that you've seen was we, I had a conversation in the hospital saying that we were going to fund that his film no matter what, because the idea was we were going to pull the plug on the film because of all the bad publicity he was getting. But now that he was dying, we were going to um, continue to fund it. And they cut that out. So I mean, probably for time and for other reasons, but it was an interesting little, you know, up to the moment that we had to pull the plug on his life support, we were still the seagulls. And until we had made the decision to pull the plug, something happened in our you know, relationship to the world and to our son and to my father. I mean, it's the first time I'm nice to him. Yeah, that was something that um, we hadn't seen before. There was a lot of empathy between you and your dad and how yeah. he said to you, losing uh, a child, um, you know, it, what a horrible thing. It was, um, it, was a way, it was a way for us to come together which I was um, happy for, actually. Yeah. I found an interesting uh, quote on Deadline from uh, executive producer Simon Kinberg, and he was talking about pitching the show. And he says, there were a lot of places that were scared of this reveal, that it felt like the blending or the mashup of the genres was too risky. There were some places where they said, 
Why can't it just be a detective show? It's a really good detective show. And it does work as straight up a detective show. But you've got this enormous twist, and it reminds me a little bit of years ago, I interviewed David Chase, and he said when he was pitching uh, The Sopranos, uh, that uh, they a lot of the the people he was pitching said, does he have to go to a shrink? And I, I was like, well, that's the whole point of the show, and I feel like that's a little bit here. This was baked in. Uh, this was a decision by the by the filmmakers, um, and for me, it completely works, right? Well, good. I'm glad. I mean, you're, you know, there's a lot of controversy about it. So, I mean, it depends on what side of you fall on with that. I read a lot of, um, you know, reviews where people were, were not happy. They were like, oh, you know, some of you are going to be pissed off. And I love the fact that it went in that direction because it was a departure from what you expected. And that's what I loved about it. And every episode, it's like, what is going to what is going on? What are we going to find out? Yeah, I agree with you. And I think you know, Colin uh, is an inspired choice for this as well in so many ways. I mean, he's such Colin. First of all, Colin is an A plus human being. Uh, he's just he's a, the kind of actor you want to be around because he's a team player and he's funny and he works hard. He's got a good work ethic. And I mean, all of that it just it adds up to a, just a great person to be around. And es especially when we were shooting it, that's when Banshees of Erin came out, and I was just. Over, just over the moon for, for that film. But anyway, I just think he's a, a, because he's such a movie star and for and such a good guy. His character is such a, a good person. I love the use of movie clips uh, throughout this show. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's, I mean, it makes it, it, it's part of the genius, I think, of the show. And a lot of it, I, I think the core of the story is, uh, is that scene with, uh, with Robert Mitchum in Night of the Hunter and the the hand with love and the hand with hate. And I Is think that there's that very- was from? I didn't know what that was from. Night of the, It's from Night of the Hunter? Night hey, of the Hunter. And he plays a serial killer posing as a preacher. Um, so it, there's, a, there's a, a sort of disguise there that's going on and he's, he's faking it. And I think that a lot of times Sugar, I mean, he says it many times, I don't want to hurt anyone. Um, but I don't want to hurt people is what he says. I don't want to hurt people. There you go. And he acknowledges good clue. that he did wipe out Stallings and his crew and admits he didn't really need to kill Stallings. He says, I killed him just because I felt like it. So I feel like he's got this sort of good, evil, love, hate battle going on in his head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen that. Does he say that in episode seven? Or episode yes, six? he does. He says yeah, it no, in episode I, I seven. Yeah. 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 I I'm up to the point where he left Kirby's house. Because uh, he saw that she actually had aspirin, and she's yes. going oh, to that's right. get those magic pills. Yes, that's right. Yes, no. You know, and and in this past episode, he was also saying that um, being in L.A., um, I, I'm I'm becoming more human, and that's what what happens when you stay too long. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. such a good show. It's such oh, man, a good I'm show. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. People seem to. These people seem to like it. Yeah. Uh, we loved having you on. Thank okay, you man. so much for doing this. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see how it all wraps up. Me too. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Dennis. Thank you. There you have it. There's Dennis Boutsakaris. And, uh, yo, know, interesting nugget there. He says, we're going to find out why he's uh, Bernie is more invested in Davey than he is in Olivia, who is missing right now. He says that's part of the denouement. You know, I'm wondering, um, you know, because they said the two of the, the, he and his dad said something very interesting, like, do you think we, did you, have you heard from her? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I think we would have heard from her. Yes. You know, um, and They've never ever said anything like that before. Like right. have you heard from her? So I I don't know. I mean, you know, show business, politics are so intertwined. We have this senator, you know, dealing with these like movie moguls. So yep. something something crazy. But if, but I I would I would only assume that we're gonna find out why 
everything is going to come together in the next episode. Everything's going to come together. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Now, here's, okay, here's my prediction. You ready? <laughs> so the aliens are pulling up stakes and going home. I think Sugar is going to stay and continue as a private detective. Definitely. De- you think there's that's no where way- we're going? He's definitely not leaving. Yes, to me, that's cool. So he's a loner alien trying to solve crimes uh, with uh, some special powers. Um, that's uh, To me, that's a fascinating setup for a season two. <laughs> um, all right, well, there you have it. There is our Sugar Watch Along episode number seven. Make sure you're back for the finale episode uh, next week. Uh, don't forget, you should subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify. Leave us a five-star rating and a review. Our YouTube channel is the Culture Pop Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, if you're watching right now, like the podcast, uh, like the video, and then uh, leave us a rating or a review or a comment or whatever down below. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we will see everybody next time after Sugar Episode 8, the finale, here on the Culture Pop Podcast. Podcast.